Good evening. All are welcome here as we gather for a time of prayer and reflection. Before we begin, I want to take a moment to let you know what to expect this week. First, I was so moved by the gratitudes that you shared last week in response to Carrie Newcomer's poem, and even more so in response to God's goodness in your life. So I'm going to put a post up on Facebook tonight, inviting you to share again your list of three things for which you give thanks to God. If you're not on Facebook, you can feel free to simply email me at stacyjnc at gmail.com. Some of what you share may be the same as last week, or it may be particular things unique to this day. Perhaps even things unique to our theme this week, which you'll soon hear about. This week, I also invite you to share pictures. You don't have to, of course, but if you have a picture that accompanies one of your gratitudes, please feel free to share it. First thing on Wednesday morning, I'll take all that you've shared and begin assembling it into a prayer of gratitude that will be part of our evening prayer on Wednesday night. It does help to stop and notice and give thanks for the gifts in our lives. Thank you for helping me to do this by sharing this journey of gratitude with me. Second, I've started relying on my Monday morning walk as the time and place in which the spirit leads me to a plan for the week. This morning though, it wasn't during my walk, but back in my messy kitchen that I heard an invitation to begin a series on the senses smelling, hearing, seeing, tasting, and touching. I sprayed the counter with Mrs. Meyer's Iowa Pine Scent Cleaner, a gift to me from my mom this past Christmas, and the scent immediately evoked memories of Christmas and my mom, and even farther back, 10 years, to the days before Logan's birth, when mom came and helped me clean and the pine saw we used to scrub the floor became the scent of embodied love and peace in the midst of so much anxiety and fear. So this week we'll focus on the sense of smell and the ways God communicates to us through the scents that fill our lives. I'm not sure where this journey will lead us, but I'm eager to experience it with you. We begin then with our dialogue. God is our light and our salvation, our refuge and our stronghold. From the rising of the sun to its setting, we praise your name, O God. For with you is the fountain of life, and in your light we see light. As we've done occasionally during evening prayer, I'm going to read tonight's passage and invite you first to simply listen. Then I'll read it a second time and invite you then to listen for a word or phrase that shimmers for you, that calls out to you. After the reading, I invite you to pause the video and spend a few moments in silence, inviting God to speak to you. Is there an invitation for you in that word or phrase? The reading tonight is from the Gospel of John, chapter 12. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There, they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, 
and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. As I read now a second time, you may even wish to close your eyes as you listen for that word or phrase that speaks to you. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. The word that stood out for me tonight was costly. It cost Mary something to anoint Jesus. The perfume itself was costly, but even more than that, it cost her to admit that this one she loved would soon die. It cost her to love Jesus. It cost her in the presence of those I'm guessing she knew would judge her to do what needed to be done anyway, to do what she knew was right. And in her costly love, the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume and Jesus, whose way forward to the cross, I imagine weighed on him so heavily, was filled with love that night. I'm not sure what the invitation is for me other than to recognize the cost of loving Jesus, of loving the ones God loves and loving anyway, despite the cost, praying that the world would be filled with the fragrance of costly, compassionate, vulnerable love. found a hymn uh, based on this text from John, and the tune was not familiar to me. It may be to you, um, but if not, 
I'll start singing, and as it becomes familiar to you, I invite you to join me in singing Holy Woman, Graceful Giver. Holy Woman, Graceful Giver, Prophet, Servant, and Believer, Woman with the ointment jar, up near the time appointed, broke the seal Christ had anointed for the coming fatal hour. Like the vessel we are broken, like the ointment we are token, of God's loving unto death, like the woman we are serving, like the scolders ill deserving, such a rich forgiving faith. In these jars is hidden treasure. Costly fragrance, Christly pleasure, like the Christ first from the dead, broken for creation's wholeness, poured out for its coming fullness, prophet, servant, hope, and head. Holy woman, costly treasure, with a jar of alabaster, shows the hidden gift we are. Therefore let us, as Christ's servants, hold our sister in remembrance, woman with the into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Into your hands, I commend my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, God of truth. Into your hands, I commend my spirit. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Into your hands, I commend my spirit. Be present, merciful God, and protect us through the hours of this night, so that we who are wearied by the changes and chances of life may find our rest in you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.